أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر أن الفلك تجري في البحر بنعمة الله ليريكم من آياته إن في ذلك لآيات لكل صبار شكور وإذا غشيهم موج كالظلل دعوا الله مخلصين له الدين فلما نجاهم إلى البر إذا هم يشركون فلما نجاهم إلى البر فمنهم مقتصد وما يجحد بآياتنا إلا كل ختار كفور يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم واخشوا يوما يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم واخشوا يوما لا يجزي والد عن ولده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا إن وعد الله حق فلا تغرن لكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور إن الله عنده علم الساعة وينزل الغيث ويعلم ما في الأرحام وما تدري نفس ماذا تكسب غدا وما تدري نفس بأي أرض تموت إن الله عليم خبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على أشرف الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى and send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless his entire household as well as all his companions and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless every single one of us and grant us goodness Beloved brothers and sisters, in this beautiful masjid known as Masjid Taqwa, in this beautiful city of Kuala Lumpur, we are meeting beautiful people in the most beautiful house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are indeed honored to be at this particular place, which is indeed a place of spirituality, a moment of spirituality. We have just fulfilled Salatul Maghrib. And we ask the Almighty to grant us deeds that will take us to paradise through His mercy. This evening we shall be speaking about the shade of the Day of Judgment. And I'm sure we all know that part of us being mu'mineen and believers necessitates that we believe in the Day of Judgment. There is a life after death. I am answerable for every deed that I have done, am doing or shall do. And you are answerable for every deed that you are doing, have done or shall do. And we should never lose focus of the fact that we are answerable to Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And we ask the Almighty to make us conscious of this at all times. And to grant us the ability to do those deeds that invoke His mercy. For indeed, we have been taught that no matter how many deeds we have, ultimately it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will grant us paradise. So we ask Him from His mercy. Brothers and sisters, indeed, there is a hadith that I will speak about this evening. 
It is the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu which is reported in Sahih al-Bukhari as well as in Sahih Muslim wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has spoken about seven categories of people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant his special shade on the day of judgment Sab'atun yudilluhum allahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhilluhu On that day that there will be no shade besides that special shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will choose categories of people whom he will grant that particular shade. And we need to understand and realize there are seven categories mentioned in a particular hadith. Before I get to the seven categories, we need to speak about something extremely important. And that is the question that we always need to ask ourselves on a daily basis. Why was I made? Why was I created? What is the purpose of my existence? If we look in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us. A beautiful few verses where Allah says, I have not created mankind and jinn kind except that they may worship me except for them to worship me and at the same time he continues to say i do not want from them any form of sustenance nor do i want them to feed me at all instead i am the one who owns sustenance completely this means do not disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to become wealthy in this world thinking that you can earn rizq and sustenance through the disobedience of the owner of that rizq and sustenance. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your purpose in this world is to worship me. And we would like to translate that to meaning, your existence in this world is in order that you prepare for the day you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will meet him and so will you. We will be speaking to him as the hadith says, مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تُرْجُمَانُ None of you in existence, except that you will be communicating with your maker without a barrier between the two of you in terms of someone to come and introduce you. This is so and so. Allah knows better than anyone who exactly you are and he knows every detail about you. No one will translate the speech. No one will act as a person, a go-between. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us on that day. So if I am going to be answerable to my maker, I am and you are, then surely we need to prepare for that day. The focus must be on that day. When I am earning, my focus is still on that day. When I am with my family, my focus is on that day. When I am enjoying the life of this world, my focus is on that day. So I will never seek enjoyment, losing the focus on that day because that enjoyment is only short-lived. Nor should I ever allow myself to earn in a way that displeases the maker because then I have lost focus on that day. Nor should I allow the moments of my day to go by watching movies or perhaps wasting time on the net or perhaps sitting with friends when I have forgotten my salah. It would mean I have forgotten the focus of that particular day. So this is what we need to understand at the beginning. Where am I focused? What am I supposed to be doing? If I think that my focus is a million dollars, I will get it. If I think my focus is a gold medal, I will get it. If I am focused and dedicated on being the best in terms of sport, I can get it because there are others who have achieved that just because they were focused and dedicated and they worked towards it day and night. Take a look at any top sportsman on the globe. Look at the top golfer in the world. He is dedicated so much so that he dreams golf. Allahu Akbar. Look at those who are the top tennis players on the globe. From the moment they were born, the father comes to them with rackets. I want these daughters of mine to be 
top tennis players they achieve because they are on the court whole day they are focused on that when they are eating they are thinking of the sport is this good for me or bad they exercise in order to be fit on the that little court that you may call it and so on so their whole day there is focus dedication practice and the object is in front of them throughout the day and night take a look at the swimmers who swim top swimmers on the globe if you look at them and study their lives they are focused and they have dedication they were dedicated upon the gold medals of this world they achieved them my dedication and yours is upon the gold medal of the day of judgment will i achieve it allahu akbar Brothers and sisters, if you are dedicated and focused, half of what the sportsmen are dedicated, you will achieve your goal because Allah is Ghafoorul Rahim. And in the sports arena, everyone is jealous of one another, trying to do one another out. But when it comes to the field of Allah, He actually is never ever jealous. He is your creator. He is looking towards you to the degree that there is a hadith that describes the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a worshiper turns to him in repentance, may Allah grant us that repentance. So we need to realize without focus and dedication, we will not be able to have that gold medal of ours. And this is why the earth and our life on this earth is limited, subhanallah. It will come to an end. And I will come to an end, the world will come to an end, everything on it will come to an end, and thereafter there will be a resurrection. And I'm sure we're aware of this. So the highlight of my life on that particular day will be myself presenting it. I read this verse earlier today and I'm going to repeat it. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad wa attaqu allaha inna allaha khabirun bima ta'maloon O you who believe, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and each one of you should look into what you have prepared to present tomorrow. What have you presented for tomorrow? And be conscious of Allah and you should know that He is all watchful. He knows in fact that which you do. All your deeds He knows. Khabirun bima ta'malun. He is well acquainted, well aware of everything you may do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So this verse, like many other verses, warning us to say or reminding us saying be conscious of your maker and think of what you have prepared for presentation so i will present the deeds that i have put forth and so will you you need to know whatever deeds you have put forth you will present them in a package now people are asking us i want to give a gift to this man and to that man can i give a gift it is the occasion of christmas and I want to give a Christmas gift to my friend. And we tell them, my brother and my sister, let me explain to you logically. You have chosen to be a Muslim. Muslim means one who worships Allah alone and considers association of partnership with Allah as the highest form of blasphemy. Do you understand? So if you're a Muslim, you believe in Allah alone. And any association of partnership with Allah is the highest form of blasphemy. So if it is the highest form of blasphemy, when people have considered someone a son of Allah and the Quran tells you Takadu samawatu yatafattarna Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar The skies are about to rip apart because of the statement that they have uttered Allahu Akbar If you look at Surah Maryam towards the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a powerful verse He says How could they have said that I have a son? And they are insulting Allah by saying that Allah has a son. The earth would like to crumble and the sky would like to split because of the seriousness of that crime. And yet we want to take a gift and say, have a happy day associating partners with Allah. Do you understand why as Muslims it would be wrong for us to take a gift? We are taking a gift and saying, my brother, you have associated partners with Allah. Allah says it is the biggest blasphemy against him. But take this gift, it's okay. From me, I'm a Muslim. Allahu Akbar. 
Can we understand and realize why we are going wrong? The same would apply if we were to give someone a gift of Diwali or tell them happy Diwali, for example. What we are actually telling them is, I am really praying that you enjoy your day associating partners with Allah and this celebration you have of the entire association of the greatest and worst of partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'm telling you have a happy day you deserve the enjoyment and here's my gift may Allah safeguard us we would like to present a gift to someone upon their sin and crime we'd rather change the statement and tell them seasons greetings we hope you have a better 2013 you know a few days ago someone said oh it's a very special date 12 12 12 subhanallah i'm sure you saw it the 12th of december 2012 what is so special about it do you know what's the date today do you know what is the date today one two three four in islam the Sharia date, the first of Safar, 1434. Did you know that? We don't know it. Why? Because to us a date is no big deal. Allahu Akbar. Your date of birth or death is chosen by Allah, not by you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require you to have been born on one, two, three, four in order for you to be blessed. No, the mere fact that you have tried to achieve the pleasure of your maker in one way or another, that is what is of importance. Allahu Akbar. So how many of us can comfortably say in my life, my main presentation to Allah will be my trial. The fact that I try to please Allah, that is my presentation on the Day of Judgment. Some people, their presentation will be lots of istighfar. Tuba liman wujida fi sahifatihi istighfaran kathira. Give good news to the one on whose pages a lot of, or upon whose page a lot of repentance is found. So do you want to present something on the Day of Judgment? Repent a lot. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana yastaghfiru allaha, According to the narration, Sabina Marwa, more than 70 times or 70 times up to 100 times a day. That is a presentation, subhanallah. You come on the day of judgment, there is a hadith known as Hadithul Bitaqah, where a little card is made mention of that a man utters Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasuluhu once. And that is so heavy on the scale that it can outweigh 99 files of evil deeds. Each file, the beginning is in the east that you cannot see its start and the end is in the west that you cannot see its ending. Subhanallah. And yet the one statement is something presented. The hadith, the Prophet sallallahu speaks of how that card will fall out of the files and then it will be weighed on one side and this, the evil deeds on the other and the card will outweigh those evil deeds. May Allah grant it to us even once. May we be from amongst those whose good deeds outweigh their bad deeds. So brothers and sisters, how long are we going to wait for before we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is it? Why have you not read your Salatul Asr? Why are you not planning to read Fajr in the morning? Yet we are sitting here and speaking. Yesterday I got the news of the death of one of my close friends and the father of a close friend of mine as well. In his early 50s, subhanallah, heart attack and gone. What guarantee do I have or you that that may not happen to us? Then when we die, we are going to present a gift to Allah. We need to present a proper gift. When I say a gift, Allah does not want it from me or you. No, but it is actually for us and our benefit. We can actually put forth and these are our deeds and Allah will give us back in return that book either on the right hand or in the left hand. May he make us from those who achieves the book in the right hand. This is why we say, ask yourself, when someone gives you a gift of a big box packed in nice packaging, what do you expect? Say the box is the size of this table, my brothers and sisters, and it is packed with a lot of ribbon and beautiful packaging, and there is a lovely scent coming from it, and they present it to you, and they have three people carrying it and bringing it to you. Don't you get excited? Look at the size of the gift. Brothers, that's not the size of the gift, my sisters. That is the size of the box. <laughs> the gift inside sometimes is a piece of stone, Allahu Akbar, sculptured perhaps 
in a way that would not even be Islamic to put in our homes. If you have a sculpture of an animate object, you are not allowed to make use of it in your homes and so on, because that is the timthal, that is a sculpture. It is something that is animate. It is known as taswir. That is the proper sculpturing that is spoken about in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. But we will get excited because the box is big. The gift is very small, might be heavy. Sometimes we look so pious, that's just like a big box. But inside the deeds are worth a small little atom. Is that what we are? Allahu Akbar. I would prefer a gift that has no box, but it's worth it. Someone comes and gives you a gift, brother, take this. Or small box with a very valuable gift, mashallah. Someone gives you, you're excited, you're happy about it. Because you know that this gift is not hypocritical where they have packed a big box and inside there is something small. You know, it gives me, it brings something to my mind. They say there was a man. When I say this, people start laughing already because they know now that we're going to get something on a lighter note. And he went to his teacher and he told his tutor, look, I would like you to give me the ijazah, you know, on hadith. I've learned hadith with you for so long. Can't you now give me the chain of narrators which heads down to you? And the man said, look, you know, we need honesty in our work. And so he said, no, I know I've learned everything. So the next day, this uh, ustad comes in and the student is insisting again so he took a box and he said i want you to take this and go and deliver it to my house now his house was very very far very far away about 20 kilometers away so this young man was told to go on foot and deliver it to the house he said okay and the condition is do, it's an amana do not open this box he said no problem so he went and as he's going he can hear something in the box and he can hear something moving this way and moving that way and he is very very inquisitive but he was told do not open the box this is his final examination he had planned at home there was no one so when he got to the house he knocked the door after so long walking sweating and he got to the door he knocked the door when he knocked the door no one opened he knocked it again he knocked it again now he thought to himself i've got this thing it's already nightfall so what am I going to do? There is no one at home. Should I wait until this man comes? He says, no man, it's very late. How am I going to go back? I was told I've come here on foot. And now he thinks for a moment. He sat, he waited for one, two hours. He tried again knocking. No reply, no joy. So he thought to himself, well, this thing is moving this way and that way. Let me see, for example, what exactly this is. So perhaps I can understand what to do with it. And as he opened the box slightly, a little mouse ran out of the box. A small rat, you know, a mouse is from the same family. Ran out of the box, gone. And two minutes later, this Ustad comes home. He says, brother, where is the, my amana, this box? No one at home? No one at home. Give me the box. He says, Ustad, <laughs> what is in the box is not there anymore. Why? I was so impatient, I had to open. This is the reason why you do not qualify. You understand? Amana, amana. We need to give something when we produce something, it must be intact. We have an amana, that is the Quran that Allah has revealed and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, if we do not understand and realize the value of that amana we will be worse than a person who has allowed a small rodent out of the box we have allowed the whole deen out of our hearts Allahu Akbar you have the deen it is to be held in your heart it was given to us as an amana hold fast onto the rope of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hold fast upon it. Some of us have not held on it. Allahu Akbar. When I see the bungee jumping in my part of the world and I think to myself, the way the rope is tied, if we had to tie the rope of the deen upon ourselves similarly, we would never go wrong. Allahu Akbar. If you were tight roping it or if you were dangling from one end of the bridge to the other without the bridge itself only on a rope and there was a very very deep gorge underneath you how would you grip that rope you need to grip the quran and the sunnah of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam much more than the gripping of that rope then on the day of judgment you can come with the marks of that rope on your hands and you can say ya allah this is what i have to present i looked 
upon your deen and I looked after the iman that I had and I looked after everything else that I had and here are the marks of it this is why we are taught that even the signs of piety are upon the faces of people as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Sima hum fi wujuhim min atharis sujood there are signs of piety on their faces from the marks of sajda when you engage in sujood your face is suddenly beautified it is an automatic beautification of your face sujood so how many of us have presented good deeds my brothers and sisters i do not want to come on the day of judgment and i do not want to be from amongst those whose presentation is adultery Presentation is sleep and missing salah. Presentation is gambling. Presentation is swearing. That's your highlight of your life. Whole day, big, big swear words. Allahu Akbar. Your spouse, you swear. Your children, you swear. The people who work for you, you swear. I don't want to come on the day of judgment. And my heart is dirty. Because the Quran speaks about يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ on that day your wealth and your children will not help you besides the one who has a pure heart a clean heart a heart that is free of ailment and sickness so i need to purify my heart purification of the heart firstly by not associating partners with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Secondly, by following the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thirdly, by fulfilling the rights of fellow human beings totally. May Allah subhanahu wa taala protect our heart from hatred and jealousy, malice and enmity. May Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us goodness. So think of it, my brothers and sisters. It's a serious question I am asking you. What is the highlight of your life? Answer the question within yourself. That is what you will be resurrected upon. The highlight of my life, for example, was I struggled and strove to get up for salah in the morning, even though it was against, you know, my own comfort of the bed, for example. That is the highlight. Some people's highlight, they read Quran every day before they leave home. Some of the older people have such a routine that it is with that routine that they may be granted entry into Jannah. So there will come a day, my brothers and sisters, when my highlight will be looked upon and yours. And the, what we need to know, Allah is most merciful, most forgiving. In order to swap or change the highlight, right now we can engage in istighfar. This is why we say some of the people, their highlight will be lots of istighfar and repentance. Some of the people, imagine, I was sitting and pondering over how quickly people commit adultery today without even batting an eyelid brother i have come across people who are quite old and they have told me without being specific we are embarrassed about the sins we committed when we were young had we known that a day will come when we are old and invalid we will never we would never have committed those sins whilst we were young and very very healthy allahu akbar so look at the old and aged and take a look at what they looked like when they were young. Perhaps they were stronger than you. Perhaps they suffered less than you in terms of health matters. That time, there were no genetically modified foods. And yet, they have committed less sins than us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. And may He protect us from sin. A sin will get you nowhere. But the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if people laugh and mock at you because you dressed appropriately, even if you lost your job because you dressed appropriately, that is your presentation on the day of judgment, my brothers and sisters. Now let's get to this hadith. The hadith, I look at it from a totally different angle. And I like to look at it as the presentation of these seven categories of people. Brothers and sisters, on that day, the heat will be so intense and immense. The sun will be made to be very low and very close to the heads of the people. And the people will be sweating. And it is going to be a day where everyone will be worried about themselves. And each one will be concerned about what he has presented. And one will come with this presentation and the other with that presentation. 
And then there will come a ruler, a man whose presentation will be the day that I was given authority. I was very just and I stood up for justice. Allah will tell him, oh, you who was given authority, oh, you who was given authority on the earth. When you were in authority, you were very just no matter what happened. For that reason, come and join the VIP stand on this day, which is a day that I have the special shade of mine prepared for you. Allahu Akbar. That is the first category. Imamun Adilu. Imamun Adil. It means a leader who is just. Sometimes because someone is wealthy, someone is related to us, someone for example is of a high standing, we break up rules that really mean a lot. We allow them to oppress others. They get away with murder literally. They've murdered, they get away with it. Look at his words. He says, indeed, what has destroyed the people before you is when the noblemen used to steal or used to commit a crime, they were let loose. And when those who were low in society committed a crime, they were penalized and punished. Sometimes the innocent are found guilty solely because they don't have that standing in society. And sometimes the guilty are found innocent because they have a high standing in society. The man who is a judge or who is a ruler or anyone in any position of authority, whether it is in the home by the will of Allah, whether it is in your workplace, whether it is on the street, on the road, whether it is in the masjid, no matter where it is, if you stand up for justice, we ask Allah to grant you entry into that category, Imamun Adil. First category is, the person who will be granted a VIP status on the day of judgment by being given the shade that Allah has on that particular day. First one is Imamun Adil. We've heard it. That is his presentation. He might have lost his job as a process in the process. He might have been murdered in the process because this message goes out to politicians as well to be just to stand up for justice. And I'm sure we know that that is what we look out for. When someone stands up for justice, he is our man because he is the right person. May Allah make us from those who can support those who stand up for justice. Brothers and sisters, the second category, what have I prepared? If I have it, Alhamdulillah, look after it. It is a gem, it is a diamond and it is more than a diamond. Shabun. نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى A youngster, youth, in the bubbling and bursting energies that he has because of his youth and his age, his strength, he used all that in the obedience of Allah, not in the disobedience of Allah. So as he became a teenager and he grew into his 20s and 30s, he ensured that he read his salah, he abstained from sin. He did not use his ears to hear that which was dirty, which displeased Allah. He did not use his eyes to look in the direction of the displeasure of Allah. If that is the case, male or female, Allah says, that person will be told your presentation is so, so beautified in our eyes that we have made you a VIP on this day. Come forth to this VIP stand. Allahu Akbar. So let us ask Allah to grant us offspring who will be like that at least. And let us ask Allah to make us from amongst those. I'm sure a lot of us have tried to do that. Allah will accept the trial. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. We are but human beings. Allahu Akbar. So my brothers and sisters, those who are young, the youth, remember, if you want to be a VIP the day you pass away, the day of judgment, you need to nurture, bring yourself up in the obedience of Allah. Do not let things distract you from your goal. I know of top sportsmen, and I have to give the example of sports because a lot of us here would be following a ball, you know, we'd be following a ball more than we follow sometimes things which are even more important. But I think the youth would know what we are speaking about. I met some Muslim brothers who play with a certain team and they, they met us and then they said we need to get back because if we are not back by 10 o'clock at night, we will not be able to play tomorrow. The manager or the captain will not allow us, the coach in fact, he does not allow. So they are very strict. 
They sleep on time. They get up on time. Why? Because they are fearful of not being in the team the following day. Don't we want to be in the team of the VIPs on the day of judgment? So sleep on time and get up on time. And be disciplined and don't eat this food and that food. Subhanallah. If it is haram and if it is in the displeasure of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's be in the same team. Remember the shade that Allah has prepared for that particular day. That particular shade is vast. There is no specific number of people that will be granted entry into that. It is open-ended. You know, a few days ago, I walked into one restaurant here in KL. And I read on the menu, it says a bottomless Coke. And I thought, Astaghfirullah, well, I have to close my eyes when I see this bottomless Coke. Astaghfirullah. But when I asked what it means, they told me it means it's bottomless. I said, but that doesn't answer my question. Subhanallah. It means you drink and you keep on pouring. You drink. I said, okay, I understand. A bottomless Coke, meaning... You know, one side is open. Allahu Akbar. That is the word they have chosen to describe when they say you pay once and you drink as much as you can for as long as you're drinking here. So when we go there next time, we know to make ourselves very thirsty before we actually get there. Why is it that we are so crazy for a free Coca-Cola? We're so crazy. If someone said bottomless, yes, go for that one. Why is it we're so crazy for the... When you enter a restaurant and they tell you today is special, everyone says, what is it? You, you, I have witnessed it. Everyone is looking at today is special. You are going to gain five ringgit. That's maximum. Maximum you will gain. But we are so excited because five ringgit is a lot of money. My brothers and sisters, why don't we look at the discounts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, you want paradise. Well, here you are. These are some of the things you could do. Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala wa rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakum bil masajid. A man whose heart is stuck to the masjid. It is hanging in the masjid. Allahu Akbar. Which means he reads his salah. And when he goes out, he's worried about when is the next salah. And when he goes out again, he's worried about when is the next salah. Believe me, if you do that, it will keep you away from sin. Because you are worried. I have my wudu after asr. It's almost maghrib. I will go to a place or two. I am worried about the masjid. Brothers and sisters, the brothers especially, the sisters, we, we invite you really to be concerned about your salah. Although you know the narration states that it is better for a female to read at home. At the same time, the brothers, you, your heart, try and stick it into the masjid. The, you see, when we said youth who grow up as obedient people, some of us are already old. So we say, oh, I've lost it already. The train is gone. Because, you know, when I was young, I did this and did that. So there is another one. The other one is, you can stick your heart into the masjid. Allahu Akbar. No matter how old you are, even if you've done it towards the end of your life, the fact that your heart is stuck in the house of Allah, do you think on the day of Qiyamah, Allah will not look at that as the big presentation? What is your presentation, brother? Ya Allah, I tried never to miss salah in your house. My heart was always there. So Allah says, you qualify for a VIP status here. Come. Allahu Akbar. The shade of the day of Qiyamah is granted to a man whose heart is stuck in the masjid. And I've explained, you go out, your heart is in there. You want to go back. You come in, you sit, you feel so hurt, so sore to have to walk out of the house of Allah. And this is why when we build the masajid, we need to build beautiful masajid just like this one. Mashallah, it has beautiful sound. It has the beautiful air conditioning units. It has the fans. It has a high ceiling. It has great space. It has a good carpet like a mattress. Mashallah, who would want to feel like walking out of here? Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us from those who don't get irritated when we come into a masjid. Surprisingly, youngsters walk into nightclubs, they come out at three in the morning drunk and drugged. Do you know that? Witness it, I'm sure it may be happening somewhere around. It's a global problem. How many of us can be as crazy about the masajid? I know it's a very low example, but it's a reality. So we are pressing the button. Once a week, twice a week, thrice a week. They will go and club it and they will enjoy and they will behave like hooligans. And they will do that which is detrimental not only for their deen and dunya but their health as well. They are destroying it. And at the same time they lose everything. But that is their dedication. 
How many of us can be as crazy? We are supposed to be even more crazy. When I say crazy, I am not talking about it in the English language meaning sense. We are talking about it in what is understood in our language, which means we really would like it. That's what it means. You know, today I was sitting with one of the brothers and he told me something correct. Sometimes some people take you literally and then they don't understand what you've said. You have a literal speech. So you use a word. So I thought of it quickly. I said, brother, I said crazy. I don't mean mad, but I mean, you know, really fond of something to the degree that you would want to do it by hook or crook. Mind you, that also is terminology that needs to be understood. <laughs> hook or crook. Allahu Akbar. I don't know why the English language is such that they use bad words to describe good things, you know. <laughs> hook or crook means by any means, but they literally saying, you know, even if you steal for it, we are not inviting you to steal. Please, my brothers and sisters, you know that. So, the sisters as well, you read one salah, when are you going to read the next? It's in your heart. This is the same. You will have the same. It's in your heart. Let me prepare for the next one. So you come early. You know with us, Jumu'ah Salah, we arrive late. We are rushing for it. Wallahi. To be honest with you, look at the masjid. Just sit in any masjid on the globe. You will find people, a large number of people coming after the khutbah has already started. And that is the main prayer. I, in my country, have some churches around the masjid. And we look at them. They visit the church for three, four hours at a time. They come early. We go to the masjid. We leave the masjid. We are out. They were there before we went in and they are there after we left. But they are still dedicated. And they are standing and they are engaging in whatever they are engaging in. And I think to myself, Wallahi, if we as Muslimin had to be half as dedicated as these, it's sad to give such low examples. But this is what will wake us up. If we had to be half as dedicated about haqq, then they are about batil, we would be solving the matter. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the shade of the day of Qiyamah. So that is the next category. Then there is a beautiful category. We've heard already the three. Imam Adil. Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. Rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakun bil masajid. Rajulani tahabba fillahi ijtama'a alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. Two men or two people, two sisters as well, who love each other solely for the pleasure of Allah. Brother, I love you for the sake of Allah. There is nothing. I, my love for you is not because after a few days I'm going to ask you to assist me financially or I'm going to ask you to do this or to do that. No. Oh, I want you to cook for me. Oh, I want you to, for example, give me a lift. No. My love for you is solely because I see that your goal and my goal is the same. You want Jannah, I want Jannah. So I love you because by me loving you, I get Jannah. We are focused on the same thing. We had the World Cup in South Africa in 2010. I'm sure you heard that. What happened? People showed so much unity for a ball being kicked for 90 minutes. They would get lifts with each other to go because their aim was to watch this team play that team. Germany playing France. I don't even know if those teams actually played. I'm just giving you an example. <laughs> Germany playing France. They would travel 600 kilometers. People traveled from across the globe because their aim was one. So they all flew in and they all had assistance of one another. Are you going to the match? Okay, can I, can you give me a lift? Yes, come. Do you know him? No, I don't. So what's the common factor? A ball. The common factor is a ball. And the common factor is a man who is known as messy. I don't know how messy he might be. <laughs> Imagine someone messy is a common factor. And here you have the deen. It's not a ball. You have the Quran. You have Jannah in front of you. And we still cannot unite. Allahu Akbar. People have united behind a ball because they wanted to go. You know, we saw something amazing happening. The builders built. Those who built the stadiums built them. The roads built them. The infrastructure, they built it. They did the hotels. They did the airports. They updated and upgraded everything that today they are in debt of so many billion, if not some trillion. 
But that was their aim. We want to host the World Cup. We want it to be a success on one hand. And on the other hand, we want to watch the match. So you choose the matches you want and you get there, as we said, by hook or crook. Allahu Akbar. So brothers and sisters, you love each other for the sake of Allah. Give each other a lift to paradise by loving one another for the sake of Allah. Brother, I, today, my brothers and sisters, we look at the smallest difference to disunite us. Why don't we look at the thousands of commonalities to unite us? Allahu Akbar. Today, people want to break marriages because of one thing that went wrong, but they will not see that our forefathers have taught us that instead of looking for one thing that will break it, look for the thousands of things that will make it. Or even look for one thing that will make it. Why do you want to look for one thing that will break it? This is why nowadays I get very frightened when I am officiating a marriage. I ask Allah, Ya Allah, let this marriage last. That is now a dua that we have to make. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us unity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding, happy homes, happy marriages. My brothers and sisters, subhanallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors. We were saying, those who love one another for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who help each other solely for the pleasure of Allah or to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they indeed deserve that status on the day of judgment. So that is a presentation as well. What have you presented? I have presented the fact that I loved my fellow Muslims solely because we shared the shahada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to help one another. When you love someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be able to easily correct them. Sometimes when we correct a person, they feel bad. Sometimes when I want to tell you, brother, what you have done is actually wrong because of this, 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 people feel very bad. That's because we don't love one another for the pleasure of Allah. We do not trust one another for the sake of Allah. If you trust me and I trust you and you love me and I love you for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will happen? We will come together only discussing the obedience of Allah and in the love for Allah and we will leave each other in the same condition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may He make us from those who realize and understand. Let's look at the next category. So far we've spoken about Imam Adil, Shab Nasha Afi Ibadatillahi Ta'ala, Rajulun Kalbuhu Mu'allakun Bil Masajid, Rajulani Tahabba Fillahi Ijtama Alehi Watafarraka Alehi. Then we have a man who was invited to commit a sin of adultery by a woman who was good looking and a woman who was wealthy and at the same time had a high status. The privacy was there. The facility was there, everything was there, but he said, I fear Allah. The same applies to a female. If she was invited to commit adultery by a male who might have been good looking, he may have had wealth, he may be of a high status, and the privacy was there, and everything was facilitated by the devil, everything done. And the statement that stopped the person, Inni akhaf Allah, I fear Allah, I'm worried about Allah. That is enough presentation on the day of judgment to earn you that VIP stand subhanallah rajulun da'athu imra'ah dhatu mansab wa jamal faqala inni akhaf allah a man who was invited to adultery by a, a woman who was good looking wealthy and so on and he says i fear allah that is enough for being granted the shade on the day of judgment May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to us. And as I said, although the term rajul is used, but it also applies to females who have turned down the sin solely because they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would be deserving of the same. That is a very big presentation. It is a highlight of your life. Because in this life, it's all about glamour and glitter and enjoying whatever you want to do. When you do what Allah wants, that is a good presentation. You will present it. Like I said moments ago, if a person is dressed Islamically, they walk on the street, people laugh at them, they have lost their jobs because someone laughed at them, someone did not like the fact that they wore the hijab and so on. That is enough presentation to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have done it for the sake of Allah. 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a good presentation. So my brothers and sisters, think what is your highlight? What are you going to present tomorrow? Allahu Akbar. Is it that you've turned down a sin? If you've turned down a sin, you are deserving of the VIP status we are speaking about this evening. وَرَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ A man who has given out a charity in such a way that his left hand does not know what his right hand has spent. Which means he didn't tell anyone. He knows and the one who has given the charity knows. That's it. No advertisement of your charity. If you've done that, you deserve a VIP status. Allahu Akbar. Have you thought of it? So, if you have given out a charity and that charity is such a secret charity, a major thing you've done and you've kept it hush and kash just between you and the person who knows, the one whom you've given it to and Allah knows and that's it. This person, Allah says, that presentation is good enough because today, sometimes people tend to give in order to achieve in return popularity or status or some form of, for example, uh, some form of acknowledgement from people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who want, to acknowledge, who want an acknowledgement from Allah Himself. Imagine if Allah acknowledges you have given a sadaqah. How will that be? We did it for His sake. I did it for His pleasure. Did He watch? Yes, He did. So we are not allowed to boast and show off except one to show off to Allah. I can show off to my Maker. Ya Allah, I gave it for you. This is for your sake. Ya Allah, this, your sake. Ya Allah, accept it from me. Allahu Akbar. If that is the case, we have achieved a lot. So we have said the point number six is a person who gives out a charity. That is the deed they have done in a way that the left hand does not know what the right hand has spent. Subhanallah. May Allah make us from those who can be charitable in a big way, secretly. It is not wrong sometimes to show what you have given with the right intention in order to encourage others. You might say, brother, I gave a little bit. Why don't you give? I, that is not a statement to boast. That is a statement of encouragement. This is why Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when it came to dire need, they gave charities in front of others. People watched what they gave. So they knew that Abu Bakr came with so much. Umar radiallahu anhu came with so much. Radiallahu anhum jami'an. That was not boasting. That was done in order to encourage others. Let's all give. And the last category that is mentioned in this beautiful hadith that speaks about the shade of the day of judgment. رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنًا Allahu Akbar A person who remembers Allah alone so his eyes become watery His eyes become watery He tears, his eyes release a tear or two solely because he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala What is the meaning of that? It means a person who is conscious of Allah, thinking of Allah, and that made him cry, it made him weep, it made him release, Ya Allah, my link with you, I am returning to you, Ya Allah, have mercy on me. On that day, Ya Allah, grant me paradise, and we think of our helplessness, and the power of Allah over us, and it brings tears to our eyes. One tear, my brothers and sisters, is enough presentation for you to be granted VIP status on the day of judgment. Rajulun dhakar Allah khaliyan fafadat aina. A person who has remembered Allah alone, so his eyes became filled with tears. It also means when you read the Quran, that is dhikrullah, it is the remembrance of Allah. You are reading the Quran, you see verses and tears come in your eyes. You hear the Quran, tears come into your eyes. You understand the message, tears come to your eyes. You hear the hadith, so you remember Allah, so tears come to your eyes. Or you are sitting with a tasbihat that the Prophet ﷺ has instructed you to engage in, for example. And as you are remembering Allah, tears come into your eyes. Or you want to commit a sin and you stop yourself from it because you remembered Allah and tears came into your eyes. Allahu Akbar. So there are many different categories of people whose eyes are filled by tears when they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we have mentioned these seven categories and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us at least to be from one of those. Imagine how the mercy of Allah is. I'm sure we cry. 
Today when you miss someone whom you are not even supposed to be connected to, start crying. We have a friend on Facebook, for example, and for three days she did not send us a message. We start crying. I wonder what's going on. Wallahi, have you seen her? No. Do you know her? Well, from Facebook. Is that exactly what she looks like? I hope so. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it might be a man pretending to be a woman. Ask some of the young boys around. They'll tell you we've got 10 profiles on Facebook. Eight of them are as girls and two of them are as boys. Some people do this and they get a kick out of it. And yet we are on the other end, click, 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 click crying. Why? Because you, just, you don't want to talk to me anymore. We shed tears for someone of that nature. Have you shed tears for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have you thought about your maker? You are going to return to him. Have you ever cried? Have you ever listened to his message and teared? Allahu Akbar. You go to a place like the Haram in Mecca. May Allah grant us return to that place many times. And you stand, your hairs raised. You think of Allah and you busy crying. Those tears are valuable. We call them the warm tears that roll down your cheeks. The tears of turning to Allah. When you repent to Allah, you ask Him for forgiveness. Truly, you end up crying. Tears come in your eyes. Ya Allah, forgive me. I am weak. Those tears are included in these. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I would like to end by saying, my brothers and sisters, every one of us will be looked at on the day of judgment. And the main highlight will be the presentation that you have put forth. Look at it. Think about it. What have you chosen as the highlight of your life? For indeed, it is now the time to prepare the parcel, to prepare the gift, your own little gift that you will be presenting. Ya Allah, I got this. And this is what I'm going to put forth. Allah knows it. Brothers and sisters, prepare today for tomorrow. That day, it's going to be too late. No matter where we are standing and what we have on that particular day, it is now that we will be preparing for it. So here we are sitting in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reminding one another to do good deeds, speaking about the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that particular day. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant it to us. And until we meet again, I'd like to say, we want to see one another in paradise. May Allah unite us in paradise, my brothers and sisters. May we love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I tell you, for the love of Allah and for the sake of Allah, I too would declare my love for you, my brothers and sisters. What joins me with you? What brings us together? Can I tell you? Nothing besides the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sake of Allah. You don't know me, nor do I perhaps know you on a personal note. Perhaps I know very few of you, very few of you, perhaps a handful. But the rest of us, we are part of one family. Don't forget that. We will get together on the day of judgment. Ya Allah, we love one another for the sake of Allah. And we heard that you said that if that is the case, we now qualify for VIP status here.